I'm often asked on the channel what sort of practice I do myself. So I thought I'd make a video showing a typical practice routine that I might do. I prefer to do specific drills rather than just playing games against myself. This is for a few reasons, but mainly because drills help you to zone in on specific parts of the game and the repetition of certain shots really helps you to improve muscle memory and gives you a natural eye for things to look out for when you actually play a game. My routine usually consists of four different drills that focus on different parts of the game. There's many different drills that you could swap for any of these that I do here and I'll often mix and match things just to make sure that I'm covering lots of the parts of my game and to keep things interesting. The set of drills that I do in this video are fairly easy but I spent a long time doing these drills before moving on to some of the more complex aspects of the game and harder drills. It's really important to build a good base and try not to run before you can walk. My first drill would usually be something based around straight queuing. It's the most fundamental part of the game and until you can queue straight and consistently you'll struggle with everything else. In this drill the object is to pot each ball into the corner pocket and control the white so that you can then pot the next ball from the same spot to the same corner. It's very easy to pot so you're focusing purely on delivering the cue straight and just screwing back a few inches. It sounds incredibly easy to just keep potting the ball straight into the corner pocket but it's surprising how quickly you can end up offline even if you're just slightly off with your queuing. There's two ways of doing this drill. Either you can see how many balls you can pot keeping the cue ball in a dead straight line and then stop and start again when you're off straight. Or you can do what I'm doing here. So once you go offline, then you continue to pot and try to get yourself back to as straight as possible each time. This is good for working on simple positional play, pace awareness and trying to get back to the straight shot all the time. There should also be a card above to some other things that you could try for straight queuing practice.
Next up, I like to do the lineup. Now this is a classic drill that I'm sure many of you have seen before. The nice thing about this is, again, the majority of the pots are fairly easy. So it's all about controlling the white ball to make each pot as easy as possible. It's also very adaptable. So you can make this drill as easy or as hard as you need to. For beginners, you can just line the balls up and pot things in any order. I'm doing a version here where you have to pot all of one color first and then all of the other. This just makes cue ball control a bit more focused because you're planning which ball you're going to pot next rather than whichever one you land on. You could even take this drill even harder by having rules like the cue ball not being allowed to hit a cushion or the cue ball having to hit a cushion after every shot. Whatever set of rules you decide on, it's important not to cheat. When I do the drills, if I miss, then I start all over again, even if it's something simple like knocking another ball with your hand. Forcing yourself to restart the drill stops you glossing over things that you might be doing wrong and really makes you evaluate why you might have missed. If you just say, well, that was close enough, and push the ball into the pocket and carry on, it's only going to encourage you to repeat those mistakes next time. Next up, I like to do some form of open table drill. This usually involves having the ball spread around the table in some sort of pattern, and then the focus is on positional play and shot planning. In this example, the balls are in a grid formation, and I'm potting all of the reds first, and then all of the yellows. Again, like with the lineup, you can make variations to the rules to make this easier or harder, depending on your skill level. Whilst the space around the balls makes the pots fairly easy, you have to think carefully about how you get from one shot to the next without running into the other balls. There are many ways to go about it, but you'll probably find that you end up with a preferred route that gives you the easiest path through all of the balls. Repetition of this sort of drill will give you confidence in recognising patterns of balls and then make it easier to plan routes when it comes to making a clearance.
Just like on the previous drill, don't cheat if you miss. Even if it's the last ball, start the drill over again. The black ball is always the pressure ball in the game, so make sure it counts in the drills just as it would in a game. If you miss, think about what you did wrong. Did you cue straight or did you put unintentional side on the ball? Did you rush your cue action or forget to pause? Maybe you didn't line up properly or even just got unlucky with a kick or a roll on the table. Understanding your mistakes and trying to correct them next time is vitally important when it comes to improving. For me, I find that on pressure balls, I can be prone to a little wobble in my cue action, particularly on long straight shots. So you'll notice that on this second attempt, when I get to the last ball, I have an easy positional shot just to roll on and be dead straight on the black, almost identical to the previous attempt. However, this time, having the previous error in my mind, I opt to screw back instead. This allows me to then cut the ball to the middle, which is a shot that I have far more regular success with. The final drill focuses on long potting. You pot a ball at the opposite end and then try and control the cue ball to stay as close to that end of the table as you can, so you then have another long pot back to the other end. This is one of the weaker areas of my game, and this drill is often one that I'll fail at. The position is just as important as the pot, because if you end up on the cushion, cueing can be awkward and make the pots much harder. As before, if you fail, then start the drill again from scratch. However, if you do find a drill which is proving difficult, then either look to make it more simple, maybe remove a ball or two, or limit the amount of attempts you give it. If you try a drill more than say five times without success, then frustration might start to creep in and it can affect your game, so it's best to move on. For this final drill, you could also focus on some more tricky parts of the game. Maybe potting balls along rails, potting doubles, using side or safety play. And there are plenty of things that you can practice, but don't try to do too much in one session. Just pick a few and focus on doing them well. After the last drill, I like to finish with a few attempts at straight pull. Just rack the balls up however you like and see how many balls you can pot in succession. 
You could also just play a few frames of normal pool against yourself. But playing any sort of tactics is always a bit difficult when you know what you're thinking. Straight pool throws up lots of different shots and positions without having to worry about playing safety shots. You can either see if you can beat your highest score or maybe record a few attempts and see what your average is. This is something that you could record over the weeks to see if you're improving. When it comes to how long and how often I practice, it does vary a bit. I'm lucky enough to have a table at home, so it's obviously easier than having to go down to the pool hall. I probably play most days, and for a session like this that I've just demonstrated, I'd play for around 30 to 40 minutes. However, some days I might just play a few frames, and I don't have a schedule that is set in stone. As with anything, the more practice you can do, the better. However, I'm a firm believer that adding a bit of structure to things and doing drills, etc., is far more beneficial than just hitting the ball around for a few games. If you want to see more practice routines and pool tutorials, then please remember to subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the equipment I use in this video, then there are links in the description below.